Good morning, everybody. My name is Darlene and I have Parkinson's. Today, I'm not going to be able to post the um, recipe for this because it's way too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to learn how to put a link into the description so that you can get it. If I can't get that link in, I will tell you, you can just watch what I'm doing or you can go and see where I got it from, which was Lisa Child's um, is the person's name and it's on the channel called Tried, Tested and True and it, the name of the recipe is called Instant Pot Creamy Chicken Noodle Soup with Homemade Noodles. I've never made noodles so we're going to start by doing the noodles. So let's just see what we need to do. Okay, in a large bowl put together flour which is two cups of flour so I've got my flour there. Two cups of flour a half a teaspoon of baking powder, and then it says a quarter of a teaspoon of white pepper or salt. Well, I decided that I wanted pepper, but I don't have white pepper, so I have black pepper in mine and the baking powder. And then I'm just going to give that a little stir together, kind of make a well in the middle. And then we're going to add two eggs and a half a cup of water. And then it says just to stir it to make a soft dough. So I'll break those egg yolks. It said, you know, it didn't say anything about using a mixer or anything. So this ought to be interesting with my hands to see. Oh, I've got to go backwards. Hang on. i got to make sure you can see me. So I'll move this over. There, you can see that now. All right. And you know how messy I am in the kitchen, so this ought to be a right dandy time. But you know, I was watching her make the noodles, and I've watched other people make noodles, and I've got to tell you, they don't look that hard to make. And I just thought, I'm going to try it. If it doesn't work out, then, you know, I'll just use store-bought noodles the next time. So... But they say that this is a very, very good chicken soup. So we'll be the judge of that later, but for now. Okay, so now I've got a soft dough and it should be thick. It should stick to your fingers and a little, but, but not like a batter. When the mixture gets too difficult to stir with a spatula, use your hands to work the dough together and lightly knead into a ball. Okay, so I'm just gonna make this into a ball. While I can, I'm going to knead it in the bowl because then I don't make a big mess. Um, okay, and then I'm going to have to cover it with plastic wrap and cover it with plastic wrap and let it rest for five to ten minutes. All right. Well, I'd say that that's pretty much into a ball. There. Okay. So I'm going to cover this with plastic wrap. And we're going to wait five to ten minutes and then we'll be back. All right, we've waited the time. Now we're going to roll it out for the first time. Then it said, keep your board well floured. So that's what I'll do. Now I haven't rolled out anything the rolling pin for a very long time. So let's see if I can still do it. Now what it says is to roll it out the first time here, keep it well floured to about a quarter or to about an eighth of an inch it said. Well let's tell you this board is not going to be big enough but it'll get on the tablecloth but I can wash that up after. So I'm not going to worry about it. I tell you, when I was younger, that would really have bothered me to be making that mess. Now, I make a mess all the time. I'm just kind of used to it. All right, now it says, turn it over and keep it floured. All right, so turn it over. They, they say it's very important to keep this well floured 
because otherwise it will stick. And if they're telling me it's going to stick, then I trust them that they're right. Okay. I'd say that that's pretty much where I want it to be. Then it says cover and let rest for five minutes. So we're back at the let rest for five minutes. Now, let's see. That's covered there. I need some more wrap. Uh, You know, if these needles are as easy as they are so far, I'm going to be so impressed that I did this because I've never in my life made a noodle. Okay. Oh, let's see. in five more minutes. We'll eventually get this done. Okay, I'm back. We're nearly at the end of the noodle making. So, this has been remarkably easy. It says flip it over, keep it dusted. And the thing is, any extra flour that you have on here is not a problem because it's going to just thicken your soup bit. Now, it says to roll it out again. Now, you know what I'm gonna do, because I do need, when I'm cutting it, I do need it to be on the board. So I'm going to cut it in half and work with half of it at a time. So I'm just gonna fold this like this, set that aside. You see what I'm doing? All right. Now, I'm going to just give that a little bit more of a roll. All right, and now we're going to start to cut it. So, we're wanting to, I'm going to put this around this way so I can cut it in longer strips. There we go. Now keep in mind that they're going the noodles are going to expand when they are in the soup. All right. So I'm going to just throw them into the bowl, and I have a little bit of flour in the bowl, and we're going to just keep them dusted like that. All right, so I'm going to cut them. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm going to show you here. See, they're going to be just little short noodles like this. They're going to, you can make any kind of noodles you like, but this is a good size for in soup. And you do want to sort of try to make them a uniform size. Now if you're wanting to make long noodles, you could just roll these up and cut them. But I'm going to be making, I think you can't see me properly. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. No, nope, that's the wrong way. It's going to be better if I move to back a little bit. There you go. All right. Now you can see. Thank you. 
tell you a story while I'm doing this. When my husband was in school, high school, they had um, teachers that had Volkswagens. Well, all kinds of cars, but Volkswagens in particular. And they had, what, was it a science teacher that you did it to? Yeah, it was a science teacher. And they decided to play a prank on this science teacher. And one day, they took the Volkswagen, and a whole big group of them went and got the Volkswagen and picked it up and carried it, I'm going to just dust these with flour, carried it into the school and placed it in the gym. So this man, when he wanted to go home, he found his car in the gym. And I guess everybody thought that was a pretty good scream. It was a prank and a half. At one time they talked about taking it up to the second floor, but I guess that was a little bit more logistically difficult. But Okay, now what I'm going to do is I've got the other one, the other half of this dough, and I'm going to just go ahead and do it when you're off camera so that you're not bored. And then I'm going to completely dust them in flour, cover them up, and put them in the fridge. And then when the soup is ready for them, they will be ready. Now, the lady that I got this recipe from on her channel, she's a very talented cook, and she was able to make the noodles while she was doing the soup. But that is not something that I could have done because I've never made noodles. So, and they said that if you, if you left them out at room temperature, they would start to stick together, and we don't want that. So, they said if you don't want to have them stick together, dust them, and then put them in the refrigerator. So, that's what I'm going to do. All right. Now, my hands are stopping working here, too, so it's going to get more difficult. But anyway... I'm going to dust these up. Oh, I'm, I'm proud of myself, actually. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put you on pause while I finish up. Okay, I'm back. Now we're on to the instant pot, pot, pot part. Uh, we need to put the pot on saute. So, saute. Um, if the pot reads hot, add tablespoon of oil or butter. I, I already sprayed some oil in there. Did I put some butter in there? Yes, I did. Okay. Add the onion and saute until slightly translucent. All right. So we got onion here. That's one large onion. Oh, I got okay. And then we're going, once that's slightly translucent, we're going to, okay. Add the garlic, carrots, and celery. So let me just tell you how much of each of these things there is, because this is on. It's going to take a minute. Um, we've got a tablespoon of oil or butter. Then we've got a large onion diced, a tablespoon of minced garlic. I'm going to use garlic paste. A bag of mini carrots or three cups chopped. I've got three cups chopped. One bunch of celery diced, which is about five cups. That's back here. Uh, it says you can use the leafy tops if you want as well. Two or three fresh or frozen chicken breasts. I used frozen chicken breasts and I used three and I cut them up. You can put them in whole, but I, I cut mine up because I didn't want to have to cut them later. A half a cup of fresh curly parsley. And they said on the thing, oh, I didn't bring that out. I'll get that. They said, do not omit the parsley because apparently it's very important to have fresh parsley. Six cups of chicken broth. She uses um, water with better than bouillon, which is what I have done as well, rather than the can. Then you want an extra cup, no, scratch that, an extra quarter cup of just the better than bouillon. Then you're going to have a little spice blend mix, which is in here. And what it that is, is um, one and a half tablespoons of basil, two tablespoons of oregano, two tablespoons of tarragon, and a bay leaf. And then we're going to end it with a cup of heavy cream. So we got this started. I'm going to go get my garlic. I'm just going to let that get going. Because it's going to take a little bit, but not very long, really. Everything goes pretty quick. I have 
have to say, if I had everything over here at one time, it would be a miracle. But you're all used to me. Scatterbrained. All right. And so that's my parsley that's all chopped up. Now, okay, this is going. So after that, add the onion, add the garlic, carrots, and celery. Okay, so I've got the carrots and the celery. How much garlic? A tablespoon of minced garlic. So there's the garlic. And there's the celery. vegetables for just a couple of minutes. So these aren't going to saute for very long, just a couple of minutes. That's the one thing I'm not used to because none of my slow cookers ever had a, you know, saute at first button. I always had to do it on the stove. This is nice to have it all in one pan. Okay, so that's going to go for a couple of minutes. It's terrible that I have to keep referring to this recipe, but the fact is I've never made this before and um, I've heard so much about it that I, I had to try it. So that's for a couple of minutes and I'm gonna add the chicken and the chicken broth, that'll be the next, okay. And three quarters of the parsley. Okay, I'm gonna take my one bay leaf out of my little dish because it says to mix these spices all together. So I'm just going to mix them all up. There we go. All right. I'm really liking this Instant Pot. I didn't think I would because I was sort of afraid of it. But. Okay, I'm just gonna let you pause for just a minute while that just cooks for a couple minutes. Okay, that's been a couple minutes. Let's go in. Now it says add the chicken and the chicken broth. So here's the chicken. And the chicken broth. chicken and the chicken broth and three quarters of the parsley okay three quarters of the parsley in a small bowl mix the basil room sprinkle half of the herb mixture into the pot with the bay leaf okay so half of this there we are plus the bay leaf let's just get this stirred up first the babies. All right. Reserve the other half. Press the cancel or off button. Okay, so let's find this cancel. Okay, so that's turning the saute part off. Place the lid on the pot and turn the knob to sealing. Okay, the lid on the pot and turn it to sealing, which is up there. Okay. turned up to ceiling and cook on high pressure for three minutes um, high pressure for three minutes how pressure level how's that gonna work hang on that's 
this off, okay? Okay, just a second, I gotta figure out how to do this. Okay, I forgot to press the work, the pressure cook button because the last thing I made was yogurt, so it was off of that. So now it's gonna pressure cook for three minutes. Okay, if your chicken is, okay, 10 minutes if your chicken is a whole breast. Like if you didn't cut your chicken up, then you have to do it for 10 minutes. I make the noodles, I've done the noodles. When the soup is finished pressure cooking, it'll read zero. Release the pressure in short bursts. Okay, so we're not going to do a real direct release. We're gonna do a quick release, but in short bursts, because otherwise the thing could spew all over the place. So it says in short bursts, and it takes about five minutes to release. So I'm not going to bore you with the releasing of it. I will come back when I have that released, and then we'll go again. All right, we're back. Remove the lid. Uh, add the remaining herb mixture, so we take the rest of the herbs. Now, if you happen to get the bite of bay leaf in your bowl, don't eat the bay leaf. Um, add the rest of the better than bouillon. And the rest of the parsley. Okay. And now I'm just going to stir that around. It's back up to a boil. And it says when it gets back up to the boil, sprinkle in the noodles. Okay. Not much liquid in here. I'm sure hope this is right. Okay, sprinkle in the noodles. Hopefully it sounds like a really good chicken and noodle um, type of dish, you know? Chicken and dumpling is almost. Yeah. All right. There you are, those are all sprinkled in. Now, um, cook them until they're, they float about three minutes and then add, um, add your cream. That, and that's it. Boy, that was easy. So we're just gonna let this cook. I'll bring you right back to show you the finished product. Okay, we've got the noodles floating. Now we're gonna add one cup of heavy cream. This looks so good. Now, if I was going to serve it right now, I would just lift it straight from here. But we're going to have it a little later in the day, so I'm going to probably put it in a pot and just put it on the stove. So anyway, I hope you can, uh, let's see if I could show you. Let me just scoop that up a little bit. Can you see how nice and thick that is? There mm -hmm. we go. That's beautiful. All right. That's Make It Monday. Hope you enjoy. I will try to put a link in, and if not, remember it's Lisa Childs at Tried, Tested, and True.